welcome to part 2 session on gcm mode last lecture we talked about how gcm can be exploited if the same iv and the key pair is used today i will talk about another aspect that that may be of interest related to the length of the iv uh, there are interesting um, problems that will come if we don't uh, pay attention to the length of the iv for example uh, this is the NIST document that shows the block cipher mode of operations, in particular GCM and GMAC. As we can see here on this page, the length of the IV basically bounded by an upper bound that they have defined it here. One less than length of IV, less than 2 power 64 minus 1 in terms of the bit length. So they're talking about bit length being 2 power 64. Okay. What happens if we try to create small IVs? I'm going to show you some interesting problems. So here is the Java code that we saw last time during part one. Now I am going to show you small uh, change in comparison to part one. In part one, we generated the IV outside the for loop. That means all of the plain texts were encrypted using the same key and IV pair. Now I moved the IV generation inside the for loop. So each plain text will have its own IV and the key. That's the reason why I did, did it this way. Now I moved it inside for loop, so it's pretty good. During the last demo, we put the IV length to be 12, so I keep it here, 12, okay, for just a moment. I got a bunch of uh, numbers from this particular website, right, just for demo purpose. Uh, these are not plain text, these are some kind of a test test credit card numbers, they are not real, they're just randomly generated numbers. What I'm going to do now is just play with this IV for a moment. Let's see what happens if we put the IV length to be zero. Okay, first step. Let's compile and uh, watch out what happens. Let's run it. Oh, one moment. But you can see here, the IV is empty, okay? There's no IV there. So you know what happens when there's no IV? When there's no IV, there's no randomness, right? That means if we encrypt the same piece of data again, we will get the same ciphertext, which is not good. Okay, let's get back and modify the IV length by one. And I'm going to show you an interesting implication. Okay, let's get back to the code. And I will change the IV length to to one, I should keep it open here for you. Um, so we change the IV length to one and let's compile this again. I'll clear this and run it. Okay, so now let's pay close attention to a few things. So I, I have chosen IV length to be one byte. One byte means eight bits. So how many plain text messages am I encrypting? I have about um, 15 plain text messages, it's not many. What we expect now is that because our IV is of size one byte, which means eight bits, we probably think we can cover up two power eight messages using this particular configuration. But I'm going to show you something a little weird. We clearly don't have two power eight messages here. As you can see, just starting here at line number, I can show you line number, 17 and then line number 31. So it's about 31 minus 17, 14 plus 1, 15. So there are only 15 credit card numbers here, right? But um, let's see whether we get any problems because of birthday paradox. Let's let's try to do run it again one more time. Uh, let's search for IV and let's just use the sort command and unique command to figure out whether there are any duplicates, duplicate IVs. Oh, yeah, see here, during the very first attempt, what we see here is that our program generated two IVs that are of the same value, V7 and V7. And V7, of course, is a byte. What we are seeing here now is that we are encrypting two different messages using the same IV, which, which is exactly the problem we talked about in part one. In part one, there was a programming mistake. We wrote our IV generation outside the for loop. So we, we were writing this, this portion of the code over here, which means all the messages are, are based on the same IV. But this time we moved the IV generation inside the for loop. 
Nevertheless, we see that two different messages are encrypted using the same IV. That's the reason we are getting the same value, B7, B7. Why is that? It is clearly because of birthday paradox. So let's uh, talk about this for a moment. Our IV length is one byte, which means eight bits, right? We have an eight bit uh, IV. According to birthday paradox demo that I did as part of my uh, lecture, I shown that there's a high chance of collusion just after randomly sampling only 16 elements or so, right? Half of eight is four, so instead of two power eight, instead of two power eight, the collision happens much, much earlier. Collision um, after about two power four elements are chosen from the random number generation process. So that means we expect to see in our context, we, we have about 15 credit card numbers here, and two of them, at least two of them, will be encrypted using the same IV key pair, which is not good. Because we shown in the other video that uh, one can break uh, GCM if that happens uh, because of the structure of GCM. So let me uh, go to the structure again and then wrap it up. So here is the uh, GCM mode uh, in Wikipedia. We can look at the structure one more time. What is the big deal when IV is repeated? When IV is the same between two different messages, the counter will be the same. This counter will be the same because the counters are incrementing the IV. And then this output will be the same because AES, for example, if this EK function is AES, it will be always the same output for the same input. That's how AES, the block cipher level works. Which means this particular key stream that we are getting here is going to be the same key stream for two different messages because two different messages, they both have the same IV meaning, they will have the same key stream. And in the, in the other video, we talked about how to decrypt when the same key stream is used to encrypt two different messages. Okay, to sum up, it's not a good idea to, to have really small IV length, although it is possible according to the standard to use small IV length. Uh, in the standard, there is more discussion about how to handle small IV lengths uh, using some kind of a nonce and the fixed value so that you don't get into this kind of collusion. But, but if, uh, if possible, just use larger IV lengths, for example, 12 bytes, meaning 96 bits. So the collusion will happen only after 2 power 48 uh, messages. 2 power 48 is a lot of messages uh, that you could encrypt. Yeah, and there's a high probability that all of the messages are encrypted with different IV and key pair. Okay, we are generating the key only once, of course, in, um, that's the whole purpose of symmetric encryption. Use only one key, but then generate different IVs to, to introduce randomness. And uh, what we are seeing here is that this random dot next bytes of IV is, is basically generating the same IV. Um, that's the reason we got into this uh, problem of uh, two different IVs uh, matching with the same value B7, B7, for example. Okay. So it's it's not a good idea to choose small IV lengths. That is the, the main message. According to the standard for IVs, it is recommended that the implementation to stick support to the length of uh, length of 96 bits. Very likely that this is not going to create any form of um, collision. We can give it a try. There's no duplicate. It's, it's impossible because it's after I sample about two power 48, which is a lot of numbers that I have to sample. Um, there is no chance for me to, to show you a collusion, but uh, it became much clearer when you have one byte or two bytes, it's very quick. Okay, two bytes mean 16 bits. So after um, calling this function for about uh, two power eight times, which means about uh, 256 times, you, we will have a high chance of collusion, meaning two different messages encrypted using the same IV key pair. So don't change the IV length, keep the IV length to 12 bytes at least. And if you want to go below 12 bytes, choose a different uh, way of generating the IVs. Uh, but it is recommended again to, to just stick with uh, IV length of 12 at least and generate the IV randomly. Okay, if we can't store the IV length for whatever reason or IV for whatever reason, uh, then we need to have more um, systematic way of generating 
the IVs rather than uh, using the random number generation because there you, ha you have seen small IV lengths will create problems. And for more details, we can always refer back to this, this NIST document. What they are saying is that if we keep the prefix of the IV to be a fixed constant, and then the next half of the IV to be a running number, you know, like a zero, one, two, and so on, then even if your IV length is small, you wouldn't have a collusion. So that is what the, the whole summary is. But again, it's probably very limited uh, reasons that uh, you would like to have small IVs. Uh, it is better to stick to IV of length 96 bits, meaning 12 bytes. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.